Good evening, I'm Madeline Peel, and I'm the moderator of Community Board 8 Speaks. This evening we have a really important topic, particularly since this is hurricane season. What we're going to be talking about is a wonderful new brochure that just came out from the Office of Emergency Management called Ready New York, Hurricanes in New York City. And this evening, in Community Board 8, we're on Roosevelt Island. We're in the Church of the Good Shepherd at a community meeting, which you're going to find very, very interesting because what we're going to be discussing is techniques so that you can learn to take care of yourself and your neighbors. If a hurricane or a, a very bad windstorm happens and what to do, be very practical, very informative, and we hope you enjoy the show. are here to tell you what you really need to know. But I wanted to thank the community board and the CERT team and OEM for making this happen tonight. Uh, hurricanes can't hit New York and they're one of the few disasters that you have a good warning about, that you know that they're coming. So the goal of tonight is for you to learn where you would go, what you would do, and how you would prepare and respond if there were a hurricane that hit um, Manhattan and specifically Roosevelt Island. I see that the CERT team is here, a good portion of them in their green shirt. Yes, and I want to congratulate you. Hello, I'm Ashley Kohlberg. I'm the policy unit at the Office of Emergency Management. Uh, here today we also have our Deputy Commissioner for Planning, Kelly McKinney, <laughs> and he'll be around and answering questions afterward. I'm going to... Okay. <laughs> there are seats up closer too. Um, I'm going to tell you about hurricanes in New York City. I'm going to tell you first about hurricanes in general, the threat they pose to New York City. I'm going to get specific about what plans the city has undertaken to keep you safe, to keep the city safe in case of a hurricane or coastal storm. And then I'm going to talk about what you need to do to prepare yourself and your family. So that's a hurricane, right? Everyone, especially recently, has gotten more interested in hurricanes with what happened in Gulf Coast last year. A lot of people didn't think before then about hurricanes really hitting New York City, but it's possible. Hurricanes have hit in the past. We haven't had one very recently, but it is something that can happen, which is why we're here to talk to you about what we've been doing to prepare the city. And actually, one of four New Yorkers actually live in a zone that would need to evacuate in case of a hurricane. So coastal storms. There are things like nor'easters. This photo was actually taken by Community Board 14 member Jonathan Gaska of the same storm that was featured in a perfect storm that dealt with the Gulf of Andrea Gale. So those happen generally between March and November. When we get more specific, tropical storms, and when they take a certain form, when wind speeds get to 74 miles an hour, a hurricane. And that's what we're here to talk about, both tropical storms and more specifically, hurricanes. So here's what a hurricane is. It's a tropical cyclone. They have different names when they're in the southern hemisphere. Again, 74 miles per hour or higher. If you think about that, that's very strong winds. Um, these storms tend to gain speed as they move up the East Coast. You see a lot of them, most of them are gonna turn, they're probably going to hit Florida, they're gonna end up in the Gulf, but they can also move up the side of the country. Our hurricane season, the country started June 1st. I'm sure you've heard that, there are a lot of stories of June 1st and ends November 30th, but New York City's hurricane season actually doesn't start until August 1st, and that's because the waters need to be a certain temperature to sustain the storm, and they really don't reach that temperature until about the beginning of August, and it really only lasts until about the end of October. So whereas other parts of the country may have a five-month window, we really only have about a three-month window where we really need to be paying attention to this. Now, if a hurricane hits New York City, there are some things we have to keep in mind, some reasons why New York City is different. One reason is geographic vulnerability. This is a feature called the New York Bight. If you look at it, you can see the coast of New Jersey, and you can see the coast of Long Island. It makes this right angle. Now you picture a hurricane coming, it pushes water. Storm surge is what it creates, and that's really what we're going to talk about a lot tonight. That storm surge, it hits that angle, and the water doesn't have anywhere to go. We have about 580 miles of coastline in New York City. That water is going to go up onto the coastline because it's been funneled into that little area. We also have population density. We have very densely populated coastal areas. 
A lot of other places you see coastal areas, they've got very large homes and a lot of space, a lot of beach area. Whereas we have some very large skyscrapers, some large housing developments that are right along the coast. I'm going to talk briefly right now about the coastal storm hazards. These are the things that you need to think about, learn about, and pay attention to as a coastal storm is approaching and when a coastal storm is happening. These four things. The first we're going to talk about is storm surge, and this is the one we really want to focus on. It affects this island greatly, especially in a Category 2 hurricane, which I'll show you in a moment. So storm surge. This is a video, or a photo from the FDR from the 70s. You can see the cars that didn't quite make it out. They may have broken the rule, you're not supposed to drive from standing water. So there's structural damage, you've got coastal flooding, beach erosion, and also you think about storm surge, it's water, it's pushing things inland, right? I'm sure some of you saw some photographs from New Orleans where there may be a boat, a large boat, that ended up six, seven miles inland. In some places in Brooklyn, in the very worst category of storm, storm surge could go as far in as six miles. So you realize it's pushing whatever it's taken with it, whether it's wooden structures, mailbox, trees, those things are going to get pushed. So OEM has hurricane evacuation zones. Hopefully some of you have heard it. If you open up this brochure that was on your seat when you came in, hopefully, there's a map that shows the same thing that I have up here. The orange area is zone A, which roughly equates to a category one hurricane. You can see large parts of Staten Island, tip of Manhattan, areas of the Rockaways, and Coney Island and Brighton Beach are at risk in Category 1 for me. Now, Category 2, we call that Zone B. These are rough correlations. If it's a very strong Category 1, we may have to evacuate Zone B. But you'll notice, and I can't reach that high, see Rose Island up there, right? It's all in yellow, which means in Category 2 hurricane, we're or when a decision is made to evacuate some feet, right. the island is going to be evacuated. We need everyone to leave the island. Finally, this is zone C, which equates to a category three and four hurricane. There's never been a category four hurricane reported in New York City, but we plan for it, again, because that's what we do. We plan for the worst case scenario. So zone C equates to categories three and four, and that's the green area. This is the storm surge. This is information from the Army Corps of Engineers. It, our zones have been kind of evened out to correspond to neighborhoods and roads so that it makes sense when we ask people to evacuate. These are the actual storm surge photos, or images, I should say, related to that data. So as you can see, there are numbers up there. This is in Category 4 at the beach. You could have a storm surge as high as 17 feet in lower Manhattan. Now, that's obviously not going to be all the way inland. But if you look at that, that's, that's a lot of water. Think about that. Think about how high this room is. Think about how much water that really is that we're dealing with. And hopefully that drives home a little bit better why we ask people to evacuate. This is a computer model of storm surge in the Brooklyn Bridge area. You see it coming in. It gets pushed in. Go loop one more time. See? That's how it will fill in. That's what it's like. It fills in. And then it goes back out. And that's, this is another image, that's an important distinction to make. Whereas in places like New Orleans, which was below sea level, water came in, and then it didn't go back out. You saw on TV people that were actually still in the water days after the storm hit. New York City, we're above sea level. The storm surge is going to come in, it's going to do some damage, then it's going to go back out. Some flooding. This picture during Nor'easter in 1992, that's a classic. That. I think that kind of dries home, the idea of flooding rain, when the hurricane is here, it's going to rain a lot. So it's another thing we're paying attention to, to know about. It's flooding rain. You see certain roadways will be impassable, even if they're you know, outside of the evacuation zone. So these are things we want you to think about, to keep in mind. High winds and tornadoes. About two weeks ago, people may not have believed me when I said a tornado might hit here, but then in Westchester we have. So it's a reality, and tornadoes can accompany hurricanes. They can actually come even a couple days after the storm has really, the majority of the storm has passed. And high winds, although the city does not evacuate for high winds, we recommend that people who do not live in an evacuation zone but live above the 10th floor, we recommend that they maybe make friends with their neighbors on the 5th or 6th floor and go stay with them during the height of the storm. Because, <laughs> I mean, you look at this image, I mean, those are palm trees, this obviously is in New York City, but things are getting thrown around things that are tied down, things that are bolted down well, they're going to be flying around 
behind the storm and these winds are blowing. 74 miles an hour is just the start. It's a very strong hurricane, but you can have winds up to 20 miles an hour. You don't want to be out of it, and you don't want to be anywhere near anything that's flying around. So this is information I'm sure some of you have heard watching the morning views by your forecaster, or the weathercaster on the channel, you know, whatever news. We want you to be familiar with this, for this information so that when you hear it, you know what it means. And this information is also in those guides, so you don't have to memorize it right now. But a tropical storm watch means tropical storm conditions are likely possible. They're possible within 36 hours. We move to a tropical storm warning, that means it's actually likely to occur. And look at how strong those winds can be. And on hurricane force, but I mean the difference between 73 and 74 miles an hour, you probably have to be able to tell. So these are things to keep in mind. Hurricane watch, again, it's possible. Libraries in uh, North Carolina was under a tropical storm watch for a while as Barrow was going by. A hurricane watch, it's possible within a day to a day and a half. And a warning is when it's expected, within 24 hours or less, and that's when those hazards really come into play. The storm surge, the flooding rains, the uh, winds, the tornadoes, they happen. Now, here's the hard part. When the city tells people to evacuate, we want you to evacuate. There's a reason we're telling you. It's for your safety. It's because we know what's coming. The problem is it's probably going to look like this sometime. It's probably going to be a nice day. The way weather is, generally speaking, it's usually actually quite nice. That's what I get the term, the calm before the storm, right? People are going to say, I don't want to evacuate. I don't want to have a barbecue. It's lovely outside. The thing to keep in mind is this reality. If we're saying that the storm is coming, we're not going to be the only ones we're saying. It's going to be huge news. It's going to be over all the papers. It's going to be on all the TV channels. And we're going to be serious about this. Even though it's nice out, we want you to evacuate now because very quickly it's going to start to look like this. And there becomes a point where when you're evacuating, where our first responders are really going to have to take care of themselves when it starts to get dangerous, and they won't be out there able to help you after a certain point, which is why we really encourage and why we work to get people to evacuate as soon as we ask them to. Because the longer you wait, you're putting yourself and your family more at risk. The worst case scenario is a Category 4 hurricane making landfall over New Atlantic City, New Jersey. A lot of people say, well, why, why is it over New Jersey? Why is that the worst scenario? The northeast quadrant of the storm is the strongest piece of it. That's the one that's going to be the most damaging. So if the eye hits Atlantic City, the northeast quadrant is coming right over New York City. So that's our worst case scenario. Here's how it's going to impact New York City. 2.3 million New Yorkers, you saw in the map on there, the different zones, 2.3 million New Yorkers are going to have to evacuate and about 600,000 are going to need public shelter. Now, we can scale this down, it's a category one, and fewer people who are going to need to evacuate. But that's why this plan is so strong, because we can deal with as many people as we need to, or we can deal with as few people as we need to. So these are the numbers to keep in mind. And keep in mind that the numbers in the category two storm is of the evacuation, it includes Roosevelt Island at least two days before landfall, the National Weather Service will issue a hurricane watch. But the reality is, as I said, the media is going to be all over this OEM, the mayor's office. We're all going to be paying attention to this. It's going to be the biggest news story event. And we're going to start preparing for it, putting the plan actually into place. So the city will evacuate 65 hurricane evacuation centers. These are places where people go if they can't shelter with friends and family and they need to evacuate. If you open up that brochure uh, we gave you again, they're red dots, and they're labeled according to the name of the facility. I believe it's the Newcomer High School in Queens is the facility that people on Roosevelt Island can go to. You can actually get there by the F train or by bus. Sorry, did you say the name of it? Newcomer? Am I pronouncing that correctly? It's in Queens. It's just over that bridge. So all of the evacuation centers... I'm sorry, if you want to see yeah, if people, if people decide to go into Manhattan, the closest way one there is, I believe, Hunter College, as they were saying. So, if you can't sit in front of the family outside, if you decide you really need to seek public shelter, and as you should, you're evacuating from the Island. So, you go to the Hurricane Evacuation Center. I'll tell you more about what will happen there in a moment. But as the storm is approaching, we're going to provide recommendations to residents. We're going to talk to hospitals and nursing homes. The FDNY is heavily involved with that, dealing with that evacuation. Um, through our partners in the not-for-profit world, we'll get information out to those with special needs about what needs to happen, start evacuating those areas as necessary, and we're working with other agencies. The shelter, 
We use something called a solar system model. So the evacuation center, that's the sun. That's the center of the solar system. That's where you go if you need public shelter. That's, you aren't able to save friends and family. Once you get to there, you'll then go to a shelter. And the reason we do that is because if it's a small storm, we're not going to open all our shelters. And we don't want people going to shelters that aren't urban. Because our plan calls for the shelters to have food, to have water, to have security. We want you to be safe. We don't want people showing up at a shelter that they heard is open without going to an evacuation center and be there with no one there to assist them, to not have those supplies. Our goal is to keep you safe and secure during this storm. And the best way to do that is to start with these evacuation centers. They're going to be staffed by trained city employees. We'll also take volunteers, obviously, but right now we're working very hard to train, um, I believe it's close to 70,000 employees throughout the city. And that's more than double we would need in the worst case scenario. So we're definitely having redundancy. And the other thing is, people who go to these shelters, they're going to be kind of bored at some point. <laughs> they're going to run out of interesting you know, stories to tell. They're going to be tired of playing cards. They'll want to help. So we also know that we'll get some volunteers from the community who's actually in the shelters. And we also will have a special medical needs shelter in each borough. These are for people who don't need hospitalization, but maybe they have a condition and we will triage them as they get to the evacuation center to see if they maybe need a little extra assistance and then we'll make sure that we get them to a special medical needs shelter. And I'm, I'm trying to get in advance of that question of, what if I don't want to leave? You want to leave. Because <laughs> Let's say, okay, you don't evacuate, and luckily, you're safe. It's not going to be a pleasant place to be until everything is back to normal, and that's not going to happen right away. During the storm, if you call 911, we're not going to be able to come at you because it's not safe for fire ambulances people to come out to get you because we're not going to put them at risk because we didn't leave. They're going to be utility instructions, you know. So in some areas, that have power lines above ground. Those will be disrupted. The transit system will be disrupted if you think about storm surge coming in and coming into these you know, tunnels and going back out, that's still that's seawater. So they've got to go through, check all the track, make sure it's okay. It's gross, but sewage. I mean, you don't want to be hanging out around that, right? If that's not functioning properly, that's really not something you want to be around. And there's going to be debris. There's going to be glass, there's going to be trees, other things that have blown around in the storm. I can't emphasize this enough. This isn't somewhere you want to be. You live in an evacuation zone, and all of you who live on this island live in one, and you've been told to evacuate, that's what you need to do. I've said it many times throughout this presentation, I'll probably say it many more times. We really want you to stay with friends and family in Boston. And really, it's because that's where you're going to be the most comfortable. It's a familiar environment with people who care about you, who you care about, and, you know, it's cozy, but it's not 998 of your closest friends. <laughs> the public shelter is there for sustenance and for security. It's definitely going to be a safe place for you. It's going to have water for you. We're going to have food for you. But it's not going to be you know, it's not going to be a fun place to be. It's just a place to keep you safe during the storm. Taking a go bag. If you have to go to a shelter, if you have to leave your home, there's a lot of things that you need to take with you, right? Things that you're probably thinking about now already. What if you leave your home and you can't go back for a while? Maybe you want information on insurance. Right? Your homeowner's insurance, renter's insurance, health insurance information. Those are copies of documents you want to have in your go bag. There's some more specific information in that brochure, of course. Medication information. If you're going to the shelter, maybe you're going to, maybe just it happens that your medication's going to run out right about the time that you're going to be there. If you have the information on your medication, your dosage, who prescribed it, what you take it for, then we can work to get additional supply of that medicine. These are a lot of these, I'm sure, standard fare things that you might want to have in an emergency. The key is to actually put this together now. Once this is put together, it's helpful not only in a hurricane, it's helpful in any emergency. If you have a fire in your building and the fire department sends everybody out and you might not be able to get back in for a while, if you have this, you're good for a while. Let's open up the questions and answers. If you have a question, stand up. Because we don't have the mic phone. Stay in the and keep your question brief. We have the experts here to answer. I can go to the other one for six, seven years I'm trying to find out are our seawalls up to standard? Our swarm are not designed to prevent working. That's the truth. They're not designed, they're not levees, they're not dams. Their purpose is not to prevent working coming in. Our seawalls 
is what Roosevelt Tavern is built for. That's what keeps us upright. So the seagull are not an issue. We have a lot of elderly in specific housing. We have a lot of people in, uh, who are in wheelchairs, motorized in regular wheelchairs. A, a lot of disabled folks in the community. A lot of us have to take care of ourselves. These folks, we would like to know how that gets communicated if they have to go to Queens. Who does that? Who is going to do that? Individuals in their homes, homebound folks, that, again, we're going to encourage those folks to reach out to their friends and to their family to, to help them to move. If they can't, then they'll be uh, directed to call 311. And 311 will ask them a series of questions about what their, uh, what their ambulatory level is. And depending upon that, um, a different transportation vehicle will be uh, dispatched. I'd like to ask, is there any part of the plan which has examined the possibility of not evacuating. Is there, is there any fault used to that as a possibility? Because I've been, I've been through several hurricanes. I mean, I've been through 150 mile an hour hurricanes. And I've never evacuated. Okay. And I'm still there. But I'm not saying this is, will work here, but has any thought been given to that? I mean, in the, are there sections, are certain levels of an apartment, or a certain section of an apartment? that you can go, which is relatively secure. Is there any examination of this, or is it completely out? It, it, it's not, it has not been considered an option. Um, Why? Because um, the power generating capacity will be knocked out, even with a Category 1 hurricane. We won't have power. Um, we won't be able to guarantee the quality of the drinking water for some period of time. Hopefully, uh, it will be a period of two or three days. It might be longer. Uh, wastewater treatment plants will be out as well. So if you don't have power, um, you can't drink the water, you can't flush the toilets, then the, your situation can, gets desperate very rapidly. And so, uh, follow up with yeah. We are unique and you may, we need a specific plan. This is general thing. Very good. This is what we learned when we got rid of the treatment and so on. We need a plan specific to this island. I asked about the sea wall, I asked about the high-rise building. They scared the hell out of people and said we can't live on the 21st floor. We're not going to be flooded on the 21st floor. Well, we're going to have a lot of problems. They were assuming we all have friends and relatives that we can move to. We have great families of all we Could I say that? Right now. We think <laughs> Uh, uh, when was the down? 2003. We went to Rio to session. We need a plan. In uh, 2004, it went, 5, it went, 6, it went, and it probably took us five, six weeks before they understood that this is a different place and that to their astonishment. The government agency, unlike yourself, which is we are, is, is uh, unresponsive. Let me give you a new We are asking you for a way to short circuit that. They have an ineffective vibe. Which is right? We can do it. Go, go, let's do it. We can do it, guys. You know? And so we met the counterparts right here. One week ago, I sat on two separate meetings in OEM for two different instances. Roosevelt Island specific. One of them is the hurricane preparedness plan that went on this evening. We are helping. We are putting additional resources. You have more buses than any other location because not only do you have the city buses service increased, you have the red bus service that will be assisting. These are all things that I know you're all asking for and want to hear, and you're hearing it. Understand. You have a public safety department. Unlike any other place on, on, in the city, you have a separate public safety service in addition to New York City Police Department that will go door to door, hopefully with the CERT team, and make sure everybody's okay. All the housing management companies are gracious enough to share with our public safety department and me a disabled list, which I am compiling together and stripping out all the personal information to give to OEM building, building contact, number of disabled, 
and their disabilities so that their planners can help put together what kind of vehicles they need and what shelters that they can anticipate need to be opened. We are working side by side with OEM. They are putting the plan together citywide so that it is one unified plan. We are not going to make something separate. It is destructive. It is counterproductive. We can go on for another hour beating up REAC, beating up OEM about REAC doesn't know what they're doing. We know what we're doing. You all know my history. For all of you that know, volunteer firefighter, I'm an EMT, I'm the real deal. The, the takeaway for me from, from listening to everybody is yeah. you really need to have a plan for yourself. It's really save yourself because, you know, the first responders, meaning the police, the fire department, the emergency personnel, as good as they are, they're going to need time to get to us, to the Rose Rhode Island. So it's your civic duty, it's our civic duty to be prepared so that when an emergency happens, and of, of course we hope an emergency never does, but you really need to plan for it so when it does happen, you're ready to take action, not only to save yourself and your loved ones, but also your neighbors. So for those people- And your pets and you know, whomever is, is important to you. But, but I think another takeaway is those people with special needs. Roosevelt Island has a very large percentage. In fact, anybody, everyone here should have a special buddy that can look after them. Could be your neighbor, could be your friend. So that when an emergency comes, they know they need to check on you. You don't really need to be a special needs person, but they certainly need that buddy to help them. And as we learned today, you should have two or three. Yeah, we did. It's been a, a great meeting and very successful, and I, I'm sure it's going to get written up in the local paper. And, and we at Community Board A are very active in this type of activity. Uh, yes, we are. one of our mandates to uh, help not just our neighborhood, but all neighborhoods.